I am that I am, Adamus of Sovereign Domain. Welcome to the gathering. Welcome to the High Court of Enlightenment. <laughs> ah, every one of you here, most of you listening, you've been in the royal courts in the past. Here we have the Court of Enlightenment, filled with the kings and the queens, the dukes and the duchesses, filled with the princesses and the princes of enlightenment, of freedom. I, I use the term a little bit uh, jestfully because you've all been in the courts before, but I'm very serious. This is a very special gathering every month when we get together, a gathering of the royal ones, the ones who are setting the fashions and the trends for enlightenment. The ones who are guiding the consciousness of enlightenment in this new era, this royal court of enlightenment in the kingdom of freedom. Hmm? Ah, yes. So welcome, Your Highness. <laughs> in our last gathering, we talked about dreams. I said, if you're going to have a dream, a vision, or an aspiration, bring it here or let it go. Hmm, rough stuff. Rough stuff because it was kind of warm and fuzzy having these multi otherly dimensional dreams. Kind of nice having them out there where they weren't subject to all the hardships, all the traumas and the dramas of this reality. So I said, bring it in or get rid of it. Big waste of energy having them out there somewhere. Big disappointment in a way also, and it created such a division within you, because you had your everyday reality, and then you had your dreamy, dreamy world. Time to bring those together. If you're going to have visions, dreams, aspirations, heart's desires, damn it, bring it here or let it go, truly. Huge waste of energy. Huge um, – it creates an aspect when you have the two different – oh, uh, lovely. Uh, uh, yeah, coffee with cream, please. Uh, yes. My pleasure? Yes, no sugar. Oh, no sweetness sweet, for you? I am sweet, sweet enough as it is. Oh. <laughs> but hurry, hurry, Linda. We need the microphone to go around in just a moment. Faster, faster. <laughs> Ooh, she's used to it. She lives with him. <laughs> Dreams, a wonderful thing, but it is, it is incumbent on you. It is needed for you to start bringing those in. Do you realize how many human dreams are out there somewhere else? It's causing a lot of traffic congestion out in the other realms. So many dreams, so many Thank you. Is this too hot for you? Nothing is too hot for me. <laughs> Are you referring to you or the coffee, my dear? <laughs> Where were we? Dreams. Dreams. Do you realize the, the tremendous congestion out there? Do you, do you realize uh, the um, – thank you. I could have done it myself. <laughs> Do you realize how many children will go to bed tonight with dreams of a better life, better oh. education, um, better food, better parents, better everything? Do you realize how many old people will go to bed tonight dreaming that they had had a better life, that they had done more things. And you realize one of the most common things with the elderly is they know they're starting to make their transition. They, they say to themselves uh, – I have to get my position here appropriately – they say to themselves, I wished I hadn't what, Jane, so much in my life? I wished I hadn't what? Worried. You thought you were off the hook. 
We just skipped a month, <laughs> so you could worry more about me coming and asking you about it. <laughs> That's what they say. They say, I wish I hadn't worried so much, so please, let's, let's not have that dialogue in 72 years when you're ready to go. See, I took the worry away, right there. Oh, 72 years, she says, I don't have to worry about anything. No. They, they do. They, they lay in bed and say, I wished I, I didn't spend so much of my life worrying about things, being restricted by things, listening to what others – that is one of the most common uh, things that they think about just before they cross over. Hmm. Hmm. So many humans will go to bed tonight and they'll dream – they'll dream of a better life, a better understanding of themselves, better relationships with others. They'll dream of the things that they would really love to do, whether it's a creation, a project, helping others. But they dream about it, and when they wake in the morning, they'll go back to their routines, back to their old way of doing things. It's time with a very special royal group of being, such as yourself, that we, we bridge that. We bring those dreams in, and that's what we talked about last month. Only bring in the dreams that you really, really, really want to manifest. The others let go of. Only bring in the dreams that you dare, dare to – oh, it is so good to see you back, my dear. <laughs> you look – you look divine. Divine. You are divine. So one of the things we're doing as this royal court – I like that. I, 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 I liked the courts for a long time, certain um, strange attributes about them, of course, but there, there was such, a, uh, such gaiety, <laughs> such fun, such setting of direction. So and you were one also. <laughs> and she laughs. <laughs> so it's about bringing those dreams in that you truly want to manifest and being bold and courageous enough to insist on it, to manifest it, to make it real. Now, it might sound nice, but that's a little frightening. As we talked about last month, sometimes it's easier to keep the dream off somewhere else. Then you never have to be disappointed by it. Then you never have to have your dream subject to the harshness of this reality. Then you can always dream it and not really have to face it. So it begs the question, why do you dream this in the first place, whatever your dream was? Why did you dream it? Was it a passion from the heart? Was it a distraction for the mind? Was it something that is deep, deep within your soul and your soul wanting to have that dream, to experience it in this reality? What was the dream? Where did it come from? And it begs a question, then, about passion. Passion. It's not the mind that creates reality, period. It is not your thoughts that create reality. The mind knows how to maneuver within reality. It knows how to avoid certain aspects of reality that it wants. But the mind does not create reality. Now for the last 80 to 100 years it's been popular to think that, but the key word is think. All these – and some of you participated in mind control classes and, and mind creation classes. And if they were so effective, there wouldn't be any more classes. Everybody would have taken it and be doing what they want. But these things of the mind, the, the, the thoughts that flow through your mind, do not have passion with them. In here there's a dream, a real aspiration, sometimes coming from the soul, sometimes from the self, sometimes the soul self, and it has passion attached to it. And that passion is what brings dreams into reality. That passion is what breaks through barriers, and there are a lot of barriers to break through and bringing your dreams in. That passion is what draws energy, and energy then 
helps to manifest and make real your dreams. So what are the dreams? The, the, the aspirations, the desires, the visions. What are those things that would bring you such joy, bring you such uh, happiness and a feeling of fulfillment? What are those things that would break through some of these barriers, these barriers of well, whether it's your aspects or human consciousness, they're like rings upon rings upon rings surrounding and sometimes actually suffocating these passions. We're going to talk about that a little bit more today, but I ask the question now, and Linda, on the microphone, please. Since our discussion last month about dreams, what have you learned or experienced about your dreams? In the last month, please, Linda. Pick some volunteers. Okay, volunteers. What have you learned, realized, or experienced about your dreams? Um, I think for me is because I have a lot of things in motion right now, and it's it's about the amount of time that I spend on those dreams, bringing them into reality and making them my own world versus spending time thinking about other people's worlds. That's what's been my reoccurring theme this month. And so the first, right after the last shout, the first week or so was focused not on that, thinking about other people's worlds and realities. Mm -hmm. And the last few weeks have been focused more on what is it I want to create and letting that flow through. And what is it? <clears throat> well, I, just, I just have a lot of ideas in motion with my website what? stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to bring in? What are you going to let go? One thing. What are you going to bring in? You had a month. <laughs> a month. What do you want? A lifetime or two? A month. This is not <coughs> trivial stuff here. Well, I'm launching my Colorado Creative News site. Good. So that's the main thing. Good, good. Yeah. Thank you. Deep breath. Good. Excellent. Excellent. And, and are you ready to bring it in in the way you know it can really be done? Good. Okay, then bring it in. Now, it's going to have some mm, – you call them challenges, I call them fun. It's going to have <laughs> it's going to, it's going to, as the dreams come in, they make their way into this reality, and they get pushed and shoved around by you, by others. They have to adjust themselves to this uh, very, very different uh, reality. But when the passion is there, they get energized, and then they become true. Now, what happens if it becomes true? I hope it does, because I've been working on it for a long time now. <laughs> but that raises a point that – and again, as we get into this dreamscape uh, and, and actually ultimately the freedom of dreams, there is also a tendency for people to like to work on Hard. things rather than to realize them. And actually, yeah. once it's realized, then there's oftentimes a sense of boredom or, worse yet, a desire to destroy what they just built. Little kids in the sandbox build up little castles and then create wars and destroy them. So these are, this is a very, very important point in understanding why you want to bring that into reality and what's going to happen once you get it. Hmm. Good. Thank you. Next. What did you learn, experience? Or come to understand in this last month about dreams. Uh, I think allowing with ease. Yes. I really wanted my own room for the Egypt trip. Yes. And I was on a waiting list. Yes. And then it came through. Good. And Excellent. I had a moment where I said, "Oh no, the money. Yeah. Maybe I should have a roommate." But no, I I knew all along. I just some reason I wanted to honor myself with this trip, and this room. And I did it, and there was that one minute of questioning, yes. and I was done with it. And that's a good point, because as your – just take a moment, all of you, just feel your big, biggest dream. Not that 
your own room in Egypt, but yeah, that's, a, that that's a nice everyday example. <laughs> Not a bad dream, though. Yeah. Yeah, the traveling. Yes. For me. Traveling. Mm-hmm. Good. Take a moment and just feel into, feel the passion in your dream. Uh, I had a little footnote here. Your dream. I didn't say you're creating reality for somebody else's dream. Yeah, that's where, again, people get very uh, they're confused or get in trouble, because the minute you start trying to dream for others, you're mixing consciousness and energy. It Do- doesn't usually work so well. And, and that, but it's a very difficult thing. There's such a desire to, to say, yes, but I, you know, I want my children and my family to be happy. <coughs> Forget about it. it I, truly, it's not up to you. It's going to be a very frustrating <coughs> dream. So take a moment. Your dream for you. Feel the passion for a moment. And then imagine it starting to come closer and closer, which it is, starting to come into your reality. A funny thing happens. First it feels very good to have it start coming in closer and closer. (coughs) And then suddenly, when you realize it could happen, then the fear and panic strikes. Then, Then it's all the What am I going to do about money? All the old human conditioning that comes in and, in a way, almost starts to push it away. Almost starts to say, I'd rather keep it in dreamy, dreamy world rather than bring it into this reality. And then the mind jumps in, or aspects, or whatever you want to call them, and starts saying, but what if it doesn't work? What if I fail at it? What if I get it really close and then something happens, or somebody steals it, or I sabotage it? I'll just keep it in dreamy, dreamy for a long time. Almost, in a way, you think almost better out there. Because then, then when you have a few moments to yourself, you can just dream about your dreams rather than living them. But in this new era, new energy, it doesn't work anymore. It won't be. Either let go of the dreams or bring them, bring them on home. Congratulations on your own room. Mind if I stop by and visit? <laughs> Just to say hello. <laughs> so good. Next. What did you learn, experience with the dreams this month? And, and by the way, it was a very good dream month. A lot of reasons, astrological, me, other reasons. But very good month for experiencing dreams. Yes. <clears throat> I worked on bringing in um, the dream of nearly unlimited abundance, and um, what I did concretely was get some books out. I I have to stop you. Why nearly unlimited? Uh, That sounds limited. Uh, Really? (laughs) That's a good question. uh, Yeah. (laughs) yeah. Why, Why not unlimited? I was trying to get unlimited abundance. Yes. And uh, Good. In order to do that, I bought some books on tape. Uh, Warren, Mine? Warren Buffett. My abundance class? Um, do I look you know, like I, Warren I Buffett? Bought, I bought your book, uh, the gal that wrote the book that was introduced here, but she did want us to do an awful lot of homework. Yes, yes. So I only got past chapter one. But she's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> she's sitting right there. <laughs> and I love the, bo- I love the book. Awkward moments. <laughs> <laughs> Being honest about it, I love the book, and yes. I will do the homework sooner or later. Yes. But easy, easier was and to get what the was the name of the book? A little cheap commercial plug here. Um, Conscious Abundance. Conscious Abundance. Did you change the title? <laughs> Conscious Money. You see what I have to deal with here. <laughs> Conscious Money. <laughs> uh, microphone, uh, please, for, for a moment. Um, so, yes, I did get that uh, Just a microphone to oh. Patricia so she can give a… Uh, Abundance? Money! Money! Oh, stand Money. up! Stand up! The, we want to feel… My dear, what is the title of your lovely book? Conscious Money. Exactly. And thank you yes. for your kind endorsement of it, which yes. Vicki assures me I have on videotape. Good. <laughs> thank you. I Good. had record best book sales of the entire book launch from Chambra Launchpad in November. Thank you so much. Can I tell my dream? Sure. Uh, As soon as you let uh, Terry finish. Yes. 
Okay, yes. I'm coming back to you. Good. <laughs> so, yeah, and I love conscious abundance. I just suggest... <laughs> Not just money. Where's the camera? You see what I have to. You see what I have to deal with. I love these people, but go ahead. Conscious money. Uh, we need this uh, conscious money on tape. It yes. Really, I think in the modern world, it's t tough to get the time, but everybody's driving around all the time. Good idea. So, um, so as narrated by Adamus. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Good. So what did you learn? All right, so um, what I was trying to do is overcome resistance by breathing or uh, listening to this Warren Buffett talk about this lifestyle that's unimaginable uh, to a lot of us, to me, and, uh, and also where he was coming from and, and uh, his whole story and then what he does about picking good companies. Same thing that your book says. He's very much into finding good companies and, um, and investing in them. What did you learn? I learned to uh, start being more comfortable with uh, this idea that uh, I indeed could start right now and invest and uh, bring uh -oh. abundance in. Come on up, Terry. The visitor's dilemma. <laughs> so, Terry, I'll, let me start by saying this. First of all, freedom is an attitude. That's all. And you could replace the word freedom, enlightenment, ascension. They're all the same. You have to be free to be enlightened and to be ascended. They're all the same. They're an attitude. That's all. None of you can study your way to it. You can experience your way to it, but not study. It's an attitude. Mastery is an attitude. That's all. Uh, we've talked about it here before. You walk like a master, and suddenly you start to feel like a master, and you got a master's swag. <laughs> and you have the look in your eye like a master. And you start to feel at your core like a master, because at your core you are. It's all the rest of this crap that overlays it. That you've forgotten about being a master. Mastery, enlightenment, is a tood. It's a big attitude. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Where's Johan when I need them? <laughs> I can hear the song coming on. Abundance is an attitude. Is abund Let's see your abundant attitude. Uh, camera, right there. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a, it's an ease. It's a, it's a, it's kind of an energetic dressing. You, you go to the energy clothes closet and you look and say, ah, oh, I want, I want an abundance look today. And you dress that. I'm not talking literally, but I'm talking the way you get up in the morning. You carry that attitude of abundance. And the funny thing is, all the unabundant parts of you. Start to feel a little bit more important, or they get out of dodge. They leave, yeah. and it's a it, it's a choice, but it's really an attitude. So it's uh, we're going to <laughs> we are going to have an abundance class, uh, but it's just going to be about sitting with our attitude. You know, <laughs> when the ascended masters, where we sit around, we we have our own club. We have many clubs actually, and we sit around, and it's just. Like this. <laughs> it's an attitude. I'm an ascended master. It's just, it's just like that. It's, it's an attitude. So let's, let's all do the abundant attitude. Go ahead and stand up. Let's do the abundant attitude. Now get everything out of your brain, because the brain is just going to tell you it's just another day and another struggle. Let's get the attitude. Take a deep breath. It's you. It's at your core. The abundance is there. Now bring it up onto your face, in your body, and just kind of move. Yeah, that's it. Just kind of move abundant. What a, 
of all unlimited abundance. Unlimited abundance. You just, you're just in ease and grace. Let's do it, Terry. Let's do it. Abund yeah, just like, just like that. It's an attitude. Attitude. Yeah. Good, good. Thank you. And remember that, as silly as it might seem, why study a lot of books by Warren Buffett? Wonderful man. But you're not Warren Buffett. You are Terry. So walk back to your chair. No, in just a moment here. Hang on a second. Hang on. Everybody sit down, please. Walk back to your chair with the abundant attitude. <laughs> now, right away you're thinking too much. Right away you should have been walking down that aisle like, I own this place. I'm walking on gold, dancing on diamonds. I mean, that's all it takes. Go ahead, Terry. All right. This will be a little bit of pirate abundance. Good. Because I'm into pirates. It's... Ah, there you go. Arg. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for indulging me and giving everybody a good laugh and a good lesson, good experience, yes. But actually, abundance is just an attitude, as is mastery, as are your dreams. Ah, you just start walking those dreams, being in those dreams, not keeping them out there, but just being in them right here. It's a very natural, spiritual, universal principle. If you act it, you are it. It's that simple. And then you discover, first of all, that what you got right now is just a big act, which is okay. But look how, what a great job you're doing it. Then you realize you can start acting anything you want. You can start acting healthy, strong. You can start acting clear, like, like you really know what you want. <laughs> You can start acting, and you realize you can change the act whenever you want. Every day can be a new act. That is the joy of freedom. Anything you want, it's all an act. Well, it's a great act, a divine act. It's very, very real. I'm not saying it's made up or false. Not at all. Everything that an Ascended Master does is just an act for the sake of acting or experiencing, or just being. Because every time you act, every time you act, it, it, it is an expression of beingness, an expression of yourself, joyful expression. Every time you act, in you, when you do it without holding back, without limits, it, 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 at first it, it brings up the issue of trust. Can you trust yourself to act like something that you haven't been conditioned to be? Can you trust yourself just to act like anything and that you're always going to come back to your I amness? But after you realize, I do, I can. I can act abundant. I can act like anything I want. I always contain or carry the I amness. Never going to lose that. Now you can act joyfully, without abandon, recklessly if you want. You can act in phenomenal ways, but right now you tend to keep it really, really tight. you got one act going on, and it's been going on for a long time. <laughs> and if, one of, if there's one thing that I would like to do is to move you beyond that act. We're not just trying to do a little better act. We're not just trying to make this old act just to f give it a little freshen up. We're trying to go beyond, break through the barriers so you can really just be expression. That's the joy. Next. Yes, what did you learn in this past month about dreams? Ah, what I learned this past month about dreams is that my dream has nothing apparently to do with my work, my mission, <laughs> my purpose, or any of that stuff. Bravo, an Adamas Award for you. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. Linda. Wow, you've been stingy with those. This is a first in there months. There have not been many. Wow. You got any money in your pocket? 
<laughs> oh, I don't need the money. <laughs> no, I want the money. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I'm pra- I'm being a practi- I'm acting abundant. Yes, yes oh, that, that's exactly. I don't need the money. And then when you say that, a funny thing happens. Calder goes into his pocket and pulls out just for you one thousand one oh, and one Korean one. Wow. <laughs> Bank of Korea. So Thank you got you. an Adamas Award and a Korean one. Wow. One what? Well, it's worth one dollar, but a ten a thousand. Maybe won. this means I'm going to go to Korea. Maybe but that's it not does. my dream. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, but it's you're, a wonderful you're place. Going well here. So, <laughs> what did you learn? That the dream is actually not about the work, the effort, amazing reality. Interesting. How many of you would have thought the dream is about what you're working on? The work just occupies time. Uh, wonderful work, by the way, but it, it's what is your dream? My dream, and then I have a question about it because I thought yeah. I had it nailed down, and then you said it, it shouldn't involve your family members. <laughs> oh. So, my dream is to live for an extended period of time, yes. say six months, a year, in either France or French-speaking yes. Switzerland, with Alain coming, because I don't think he'd want to say no to that. No, but I mean, so, <laughs> so I don't. And we so, have that on am video, I getting, by the am way. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, but that's right. I can't speak for him, but obviously, it let's, would let's be. Let's stop it right there. Why do you want to go? Oh, I want to go to fulfill my lifelong, lifelong f- love of, of speaking French. Yes, good. Good. Now, you can do that, and it doesn't have to involve Alain. I, I know. Yes. Oh, of course. Yes, but it could if that's his dream. Yes. I don't think it's his dream. I think he already knows how to speak French. <laughs> 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 uh, Houston, we got a problem. Oh, we could always or get better. Paris, at we it. have a problem. <laughs> so that's interesting. So stop for a moment, everyone. And uh, and Calder is telling me to hurry. I told him I'd be <laughs> short. Uh, he he's uh, he and dear Linda are leaving for Egypt, and I'm also leaving tonight uh, at eight. I'll be there at eight zero one. It takes me one minute. It takes him two days to get wow. there. But yes. So uh, let's go back to this. How much of your dreams are contingent or dependent on other beings? Well, want a percentage? Hi. Any guesses? Hundred? Uh, Ninety-nine, nine, 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 to almost to infinity. Almost every one. Don't. Uh, it's not unusual uh, because you've grown up in. Uh, communal situations, communal lifetimes. You've, uh, there's the biological families, everything else. So it's very natural to think that. For those of you who are in a relationship, uh, a, what do you call it? A committed relationship. Should be committed. But for <laughs> being in the relationship, <laughs> no, it's a good, a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly you were like, well, my happiness is dependent on my partner or my children. This is where you get in trouble. That's not freedom. I'm sorry. They're lovely beings, uh, for the most part. They're (laughs) lovely, lovely beings. But uh, let's just say you're you're children. You feel an obligation, a debt, a service, and all the rest of that. You brought them into this world. You have to make them, damn it, appreciate it. Uh, (laughs) So there is this there is this uh, interrelationship that makes it very hard for your dreams to come into reality. It takes a very bold, courageous person to dream their own dreams for themselves. Now, in me, and this is very similar to Ascension, by the way, because the first thing that comes up is, oh my God, what's going to happen to my children, my husband, my parents, you, you name it, my job, anything else. So you immediately cut off the life force energy to your dream. And, and then you say, well, I'll have to wait until they graduate from college or whatever whatever happens. So now you have unfulfilled dreams. The thing that amazes me that I don't quite understand – actually, I do, but I'm just provoking you <coughs> – is who said that your dreams or your enlightenment or ascension are going to harm these others? 
that's going to suddenly blow up your spouse, uh, or suddenly your children will be without a mother or a father. Where does that come from? That, that there is this assumption that if your dreams come true, that everybody else is screwed. Interesting. Uh, so I'm sorry to interrupt, but oh, yeah. I've, I've shared it, and Good. and it's it's it just it so feels so exciting to me to yes. have that passion of my heart yes. um, connected yes. to this yes. that doesn't. That, but I also could. I mean, sure, I could go and do that tomorrow. Yes. But what I'm really asking for is that the universe orchestrate a magnificent set of circumstances to make that for that dream to happen in a, a beautifully, divinely orchestrated way. Yeah. And, Instead and the universe of, uh, and, doesn't give a, a damn. No, yeah. it doesn't. Uh, and, and I hear the expression, and I know what you mean uh, when any of you say it, but it's you that's orchestrating the universe. Mm. It's you that is calling in the energies that are aligning them and appropriate. And, and as soon as there is that little breakthrough in enlightenment, ah, whoo, it's here. Which is a difficult thing because sometimes you don't want to you don't want to have to face that it's coming from here. It's easier to blame it on the universe. Uh, that would be a great your next book, blame it on the universe. <laughs> it wild hit. You'll write it on your one year sabbatical to France. Mm. Ah yes, yeah. Blame it on the universe. Yeah. Thanks again for all your support, Shambra and yes. Adamas. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And one more. One more. What did you learn or experience about your aspirations, your dreams? Dear Bonnie, Hi. lovely dress today. Thank you. You look festive. Thank you. Aware. <laughs> groomed. I want it to be freedom. Yes. Good. But how am I going to get there? Ah, leading up to my next question. Thank you. Thank you. How – that was, was my next question <laughs> – what does it take for freedom? What does it take for freedom, Bonnie? <laughs> Not to have to work all Not day, to have to every work. day. Good. Why do you have to work? Because I need the money. But you, how many did you get this? You have to work to get money? Yes. When was this invented? <laughs> A long time ago, I think. I think, Bonnie, it starts with that attitude. You've got the attitude, the upbringing, the previous life backgrounds. Work for it. Struggle for it. There's almost a sense of guilt, uh, uh, maybe even a little bit of a lack of appreciation if you don't get down on your hands and knees and suffer for it. Let us release that. Right here in this court of enlightenment, let us release it. It doesn't look good on you like that blouse does. It doesn't. So you've got this deep, very deep-seated belief that you have to work for it. You, you do. So many of you do. You can let that go, Bonnie. You can then uh, – two things happen. First of all, you start enjoying your work rather than resenting it. Secondly, you realize it's, it just flows in. It just comes in. It's the dream brought to reality. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. But what are you going to do tomorrow? Go to work some more. <laughs> work some more. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then what? What does it take for your freedom? What does it take? And this is a question for any of you, because Linda will be coming with the microphone. What does it take? Yes, uh, Linda will bring the mic. Uh, passion for discovery. Passion for discovery. Good, good. Um, do you have passion for discovery? I do, and, and I've been living my dream. Um, walking through doorways that are just opening up. Good. More and more potentials. Um, I have so much. Um, I'd like to share with people. Nah. Um, nah. Let's stop right there. <laughs> I, I understand what you're saying. Calder's giving me a hard time for. Uh, wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> there are a lot of women here that want to know if he's single or available. 
<laughs> Why are you asking me? I, I'm just, he said he's got a lot to share, you know, I'm just asking. Got a lot, to, okay. Well, here we go down that rabbit hole. I am, I am single. You are single, okay. Do you want to give out your phone are you number available? or your email address? I am address? available. Oh! Yeah. Woo! Did you hear uh, that? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much, um, how do you say, in, in, in my own available journey, tonight? A, a journey of my own discovery where it's just like I'm not looking outside myself for anything Good. really. Good. It's so you have a lot to share. And, and I stopped you because in this, I'm doing this to irritate all of you. You still have this thing about saving the world. Forget about it. Forget, I'm going to get into that in just a moment again until you start to get it. Sharing just for the sake of doing it, of, of expression, whether you're sharing it with a, with a little gopher, whether you're sharing it with a human or sharing it with an archangel, that's great. But never – don't share just to try to save the world. And I, I realize that's not what you meant, but well, I needed that. I'm being told I'm, – I'm hearing things out there that it takes a, the collective stop. consciousness. Being told by whom? <clears throat> well, I uh, <laughs> – <laughs> oh, cryon, cryon, cryon. All right. Well, good. Okay. At, at least, it, it take, it at least takes you're a good certain company. amount of collective consciousness to you. Me. Listen to cryon. You don't listen to me. <laughs> well, I'm. Tr- I, I am listening. I'm open to everything. Attached to nothing. <laughs> what is cryon saying to you right now? Um, run, run. Well, no, no, no. Actually, he's, he's, he, he says the same thing. He, says, he really is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I want those voices that any of you hear to be your own. We don't. We really don't talk to you all that much, right? Really, it, they, humans they, they they want to believe that there's some higher being talking to them, giving them guidance. First of all, ascended masters don't know the answers. They're old farts. They died a long time ago. They don't understand it. They're going to tell you one thing. They're going to tell you to allow, or they're going to say love, or wh- love yourself. They're not going to go into this yip, yip, yip like, like I'm doing right now. <laughs> they're going to make it clear. So please, b- between now and our next gathering, no, no more of this they're telling me. Take that out of vocabulary, or don't come back here ever again. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Uh, because where we're going, there's no room for it. They. Who's they? They. They, to me, is mass consciousness. This big, Borg, blobby kind of thing. They. They're the ones who set the laws, tell you how fast you can drive. They're the ones who tell you you have to wear red in Valentine. It's always they. <laughs> they're, the w- <laughs> they're the ones who tell you what to think and what to do. Let's, let's release they. I, I, I'm tracking with you, but I just love these opportunities to interject. Let's let go of the they. There is only one, and it's you. Take credit for it. I'm telling myself – I'm telling myself – that deep resonant part within me is sharing profound knowledge that I already have, but I just kind of blocked. No more they. They do not ask you to write books. They'll help you once you decide to bring your dream to reality. Oh my gosh, there is a, 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 just a legion of them. They're here to support the royalty, you. But they don't say, you need to write a book. First of all, they have better things to do. And secondly, <laughs> secondly they don't care until you do. Got it? They don't care until you do. But you're not pawns in this kingdom. They're not moving you around and saying, we want you to do this, we want you to do that. If that was true, just boom, get it over with right now. Terminate. Come back in another – I'm serious. Yeah. Uh, I just terminate, because otherwise you're going to be really frustrated. Oh, so we have to keep moving along. Were we done? Really? Okay, good. Good. So, so uh, how – what does it take for freedom? Give me just a few words, profound words. Uh, to just do and be. Be? How do you be? Human? Being? <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
Do Go we? a little bit <laughs> <laughs> beyond. Follow your passion. Follow your passion. Just follow your passion. With, with no worries, no fear. No worries. Good. I like that. A few more. What does it take for freedom? And I'm not asking for my sake. I'm asking you. What does it take? Uh, for me, I think it's just it takes just loving myself, because I really find that no dream can make me happy unless yes. I'm in love with myself. Good. Good. Excellent. Uh, and but the question then I have to ask is, are you? That is the work in progress because, <laughs> because because you know I really discovered this last month that you know I have everything I actually want. I really have no dreams there out there, but I'm not happy. So mm. and that has been the thing with me for yeah. a long time. Yes. Yeah. So what you want, you know, is work really in progress about. and loving yourself. What what would one do as part of this work in progress? Breathe. <laughs> Go ahead. And what else? Um, I think it's really firstly it's shutting off my mind. Thank you. Because the, my mind is the Thank one that's you. going around and around and telling me all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. How does one shut off their mind? Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and? And? Shut off the mind, breathe, but. You know, just letting more of soul of the I am presence come to the forefront. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I'll sum it up. It, it's really about trust because the, the mind is always out of trust, always, always. When you breathe, when you get into trust, no matter what, uh, an unconditional trust. Now, we talk about trust a lot. It's not a new topic at all. But for most of you, it's a conditional trust. Uh, it, I'll go a little bit, I'll put one toe in the water. But I'm talking here about. Just total, wide open trust. Exactly. And you know, the only time I've been really happy is when I have totally trusted and I have been totally in touch with myself. Yes. And yeah. for some reason, in this last few months, it's just, let's say, a lot of old aspects have come up and I'm trying to integrate the old aspects. Now, we'll use this as a continuation of our discussion of dreams. So you get into trust. You start to feel good. You start to feel balanced. And it starts happening. Now, right away, what happens in this reality is that others start attacking it. Uh, and not, and it's not just you attacking it, but others start attacking it. You're crazy. What are you doing? <laughs> act, like, <laughs> act like the rest of us. Uh, what, what's wrong with you? You know, why do you have to be so different? You have to be prepared for that. You have to be prepared. Most of you are very um, sensitive about what other people think about you. So once they start attacking, how are you going to stay in that balance? I find that you know, the, the main attack is from my own mind. Yes. And uh, not listening to what my mind is telling me, because I cannot listen to what other people tell me. Yeah. But trying not to listen to my own mind, it's, that gets a little tricky yeah. sometimes. Good. So uh, I, I just want to summarize here. Uh, the work in progress, um, how are we going to just get through it? Because otherwise this could take a long, long, long time. I've been finding recently that it's just making that choice. and. You can see that choice sometimes just in front of you, and you know it's, some, it's just taking that step. Yeah. And um, I can see now that it's getting to the point where I cannot not take that step yes. and remain uh, balanced. And incented. with all of you, I would like that we go beyond the steps now, uh, because. You know, one step leads to another step, leads to another step, and it leads one to believe they're making progress, but in reality, it's just a lot of steps. If you like steps, that's fine. But in, in this new era, I want to break through, and not just steps anymore, but 
really breaking through that, that crystal ceiling. Good. One more. What is it going to take? What is it going to take for enlightenment? I'm, I'm going to stand up because this is not normal for me to do, but I'm going to stand here and say that um, there are a few things this month that has scared the shit out of me, but Good. Uh, but it's... I didn't know they were dreams necessarily, mm -hmm. but they manifested. Yeah. I developed a relationship with someone that I didn't even know mm. that has been so choice and so dear to me that I did not even expect, I did not think in my mind, but it is here and it is real and it is everything that I wanted mm -hmm. that I didn't even know I wanted. I manifested a relation, oh, well, we've got a large family, and every year one member of our family holds a family reunion, and I, it was my year to host it. Mm -hmm. And we've got 75 people in my immediate family. Dear Linda, what was my question? See what happens? They. Yes. yes, they could not receive. I said, I'm a grand manifester. Linda, I can make it happen, what was the and question? they wouldn't do it. The question. They. What is it going to take to break through? What's it going to take for enlightenment? And you do, you're giving a wonderful example, telling stories. Okay. What is it going to take? Be really clear. Well, I don't understand then what. <laughs> The last thing that happened was another relationship that I didn't even know that I wanted or needed or anything, and it's here. Yeah. So, okay, if I'm telling a story, I don't know you see what how happens. else to explain no, no, no. it. You see what happens now, and uh, it isn't to take away from your experiences at all, but where we are going, all of us, in this royal court of enlightenment, it's about clarity also. It's about clarity. What's it going to take, Linda? One word. What's it going to take to break through for, for your enlightenment, for your freedom? You're, you're not free. None of you truly are right now. Getting close, taking steps, work in progress. What is it going to take? And this relates directly to our discussion of dreams. You have a dream of freedom, but it's a dream. It's not here. What? is it going to take? And it's not about anybody else or anything else. Linda, you're almost you're right on it. It's on the tip of your tongue. What's it going to take? Clarity, Linda. Clarity. Clarity. Chambra. Clarity. You see, uh, it's so easy to get distracted. It's so easy to get into stories and issues. Just clarity. Clarity is also an attitude. It really is. Just like mastery, just like enlightenment and ascension. Clarity. Clear about your dreams. Clear about your choices. Clear about the I am. We see it all the time. We see it here. We see it in workshops that we do. The distraction, going off, chasing rabbits, chasing entities, chasing, well, they told me they did not tell you. And if they did, don't come back here. That simple. Tough but simple. We're not, we're not going to get into all that. This is about clarity, about the clear, crystalline I am. That is the dream, but that's also coming in. My dear friends, this physical body of yours is preparing itself to accept the true crystalline nature of yourself, your soul, your I amness. It's the dream. It's the dr a lot of other dreams, a lot of other things you'd like to do, but the true dream or the true, the true desire of the soul, 
was about present embodiment. Present embodiment. Not being in two places or a thousand places or ten thousand at one time, but being back together. Clarity, right here. Embodying this crystal. And when I say crystal, I'm not talking about the kinds that uh, the stones. I'm talking about it. Crystal means clear, clarity, pure. So this crystalline nature of what you would call the soul is preparing to come in. The dream, uh, the frightening dream, because you've been pursuing it. You've been a work in progress, as Marianne would say, for so many lifetimes. Been studying it. You've been in the churches, creating the churches. You've been in mystical societies, secret organizations, everything else. But in a way, those were steps along the way, maybe even necessary steps or steps of experience. It's time we stop taking the steps. This body of yours, Linda and Roy and Edith and all of you, this body is getting ready to accept that I am. It is a true crystalline structure that has not been in the physical before, but it's coming in. It needs clarity. It needs the attitude. It needs the dream. And this dream is the grandest of all dreams. It's the dream of the soul, being together and present within this physical experience, being human and divine simultaneously, no longer separate, being in and of this reality with all of itself. This desire of the soul, if you take a moment to feel it, the soul into itself now. The soul into itself. The soul created this aspect that would go into human experiences before all of it came in. And it gave this human aspect, who has had many, many lifetimes, a large degree of freedom and free will. But there are times when the soul has superseded or overruled some of the things of the human. It's given the human a very, 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 very long line. It, and, and it's this human is the soul. But the soul, in its brilliance, didn't send all of itself within itself right away. The soul said, to know myself and to love myself, I'm going to dive completely into me. And in that moment, this aspect that will go into the, this fragment of the soul, that will go into the human experience, went forth paving the way, blazing the trail, or adjusting the frequencies so that ultimately the entire I am-ness could be present within itself. You're this body that you have, this mind that you work with, this is the, the lifetime, the vessel, the vehicle for which the soul will come in. But it will not force its way in. It cannot force its way into itself. It will wait patiently until this part of itself that is human is ready, has clarity, has the attitude, and is willing to receive into the physical body. You are the soul, but you are in a way also just a, a shadow of the soul. The soul right now is saying, Paul, I'm right here. I am you, you are me. There really is no separation. But I was so wonderfully clever that I created you, Paul, to go first before all of Paul came in. I said, but Paul, I love you because I love me, so I'll wait until you are ready. 
Even if it appears that you get lost, which I know you won't, I'm going to wait until you're ready, Paul, because, Paul, when you say you're ready, then I'll know I'm ready. We don't have room for distraction, for they or for the others. We don't have room or patience anymore for steps. We don't have time for distraction. It's now, right now, right here, period. Soul, ready to come in. I'm ready. And wants to come into that body, into this being, into this experience. So I asked the question, dear human of Paul, what does it take? What does it take? And that's why we're talking about dreams. This is the dream of the soul and also of the human. What does it take? I said, get rid of all the rest of your dreams. They were frivolous. They were distractions. They were wasting energy, wasting my time. Get rid of them. Release them. Just the real dreams, the dream of the soul and the human, the Paul dream, or the Joanne dream, or Terry, or whoever you happen to be. It's an amazing dynamic that's happening right now. And dear Linda, that soul wants to come into this body, and you have to be clear about you. No more stories. No room in this royal court for stories, just experiences, just realities. That's it. Let's take a deep breath. Deep breath. What just happened? I lost my coffee. What just happened? Anybody? Something very interesting just happened. Yes. Well, I, I felt a shift. Yes, a big shift. Yes. Why? I was in that place allowing myself to feel and not think, but feel and Good. be. There was a lot of um, bouncing energies before, deliberate, passing the microphone, a lot of mind thoughts, a lot of emotion, and it was all, in a sense, distraction. But you knew it. Deep within each and every one of you, you knew it. And you were the ones, not they, but you, called out and said, Where is this going? What? What? This, uh, you know, and, and part, to a degree, the mind is a little satisfied because it's got commotion. Got commotion and commotion. And it kind of likes that. But there was something deeper that said, Let's get on with it. Using all of you, but then using Linda as the, uh, as the impetus to move into real. So thank you, Linda. So, good. Thank you. Now, moving along. Oh, never enough time. Moving along. We have – there is the dream, and the dream – I'm going to ask you to feel it for a moment. It's so thick right now. The dream of the soul to finally be within itself. This is the I Am, and it happens here – physical reality. Why? Because it's so damn tough. <laughs> because it's so real. It's not uh, gaseous. It's not airy-fairy. If it can happen here, it happens, you see. In a, way, a strange way of saying, the soul has – that the I Am – has had some uh, previous experiences with coming into itself. It's kind of a, almost like a unification, almost like a diving deep into itself and emerging then within itself, if that makes sense. But it was done in, on, in other realms, in non-physical, kind of ethereal realms. So there was some doubt, you could say, using human terms or rather a sense of ah, not quite total satisfactory sense of coming into the I Am that your soul had. It says, I, I need it. I really need to feel it. I really need it 
uh, so that it's a, a grand experience, not just a fluffy experience. And so here you are, so in your experience now. Here you are, and if you can take this lifetime, this body, th this identity that you have, and crystallize it, let soul fully come into this body, then it feels, ah, full satisfaction, no doubt. That was it. The soul diving into itself. So this dream of being within, the dream of the soul, and the dream of remembering and coming back to your full self, your total consciousness, dream of the human. It's a big dream. It's a scary dream, because what if it doesn't work? What if you fail at it? Huh? You're not going to fail? What if you do? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Good answer. An Adamus Award, Linda. An Adamus Award to Jeffrey. It doesn't matter, because when you think about failing, that's coming from what? Your mind. And really, actually, from your past experiences. Because it's saying, oh, I failed you know, this lifetime. How many times have you failed? Ooh. So the mind is setting up. It doesn't matter, because those are human thoughts. When there is the divine involvement. <laughs> when there is a divine involvement, there is no such thing as failure or success. Sorry. Just experience. There is no right or wrong. Let's take a deep breath. Running out of time. Hmm. I want to talk for a moment about something that ties into all this we are going to continue to weave in. And it is something that uh, Jean and Calder got to talking about the other night on the phone, because we have all been talking about it in our consciousness, in our dream state. Humans have issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, profound. It is one of those master statements. Yeah. Just stand on the street corner or at the airport, yes, and just spew off things like, yes, humans have issues. They'll think you're wise, actually, if you say it right. Humans also meaning not me. Humans have issues. Humans have issues. Other humans try to treat them, and it doesn't work very well. And it's working less and less well every single day. It's called psychology or psychiatry. Well, it's also called pharmaceuticals, <laughs> better life through chemistry. Not really. <laughs> it's called giving pills to handle things because the old psychology isn't working. Old psychology is based on the mind. It's based on the mind. And it's based to a certain degree on a very narrow perspective of the past. It fails to take into account past lives. It fails to take into account, yes, the soul, which I don't expect that it will, but it looks at a very narrow set of circumstances, and it gets very, very mental. So it's not working very well. It's not, and this all <laughs> comes back to the subject of dreams. When there are psychological issues, when it is all mind-focused and there's a lot of mind processing, can you imagine? The mind is actually very clever up to a degree. It will, it will go in circles and circles and circles. And it will feel because it is taking steps, because it is always working on things, that it's making progress. But the whole time the mind is laughing, <laughs> saying, Boy, I got them fooled. I just got them running in circles. The mind loves activity. Why? That makes it feel alive. It's like a computer that's always on, always churning away. And if it's cranking out thoughts and emotions, it feels like it's doing its job. Psychology is based on the mind, for the most part. And yes, emotions, but emotions come from the mind. The mind, as we've talked about in some of our classes, created emotions as a cheap substitute for feelings, awareness, consciousness, consciousness. It's time, and, and, and when the mind gets involved 
in dreams, it gets very, very confused and it chases dreams. And the dreams really never become a reality. What happens is you get a little morsel of the dream landing once in a great while. Just enough dream to keep you dreaming somewhere else. They don't manifest. They don't come in. When somebody is having deep psychological problems, they're, they're confused. They don't know what to do. They're in a morass of emotions and thoughts and they can't sort it out anymore. They go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist. And what happens? They get involved in mental masturbation, mutual masturbation with each other. And they just start processing. And it gives a sense of relief because, oh, finally something is being done to untangle. But it doesn't. Really, really doesn't. Now, there are times when somebody will have a certain amount of relief through therapy. But I'm going to say it's not the therapy, it's actually the person, the soul, the uh, whatever you want to call it, finally saying, I'm tired of this game, I don't care what the psychologist is saying. I'm going to get myself back into balance. There is a th – this whole game of, of the psychology that's being practiced right now, extremely mental. We can go beyond that, starting with yourself. It always starts with yourself, because when it starts here, you don't have to go out and stand on a soapbox and preach it. You just radiate it and illuminate it. The new psychology I would call – drum roll <laughs> – thank you, thank you – compassionate psychology. Compassionate psychology. It's what we did in one of our recent dream walks. We went back to the uh, a time in, in the listener's life, back to when you were 18, 24 years old. I picked that. Uh, time frame on purpose, went back to visit, not to process, not to figure out what was done wrong or who done you wrong. Uh, it's an inherent problem in mental psychology. But back to visit self, back to visit, not to do anything, not to try to repair or fix, not to try to have sympathy. Sympathy is very different than compassion. But the compassion was to be able to go back into that time frame that was 20, 30 years ago, back to an incident that happens. And by the way, it's always interesting – I'll say go back to when you were 18 to 24 years old – and most of the time people will say, I went back to an incident I, I don't, didn't think I would have ever picked, but I just found myself there. Interesting. I wonder why that is because you weren't thinking about it and because it was actually probably more important or influential than the one you've been thinking about and processing. So you go back there to visit. What are you doing in the visit? What are you doing? Well, you're just having compassion. Compassion is acceptance. It's not saying, oh, you poor thing, look what happened to you. That's mental psychology. And that's, that's really very, very – at a point it actually can be harmful. Now, Calder is holding back my words, but I'll say it. I don't like it. Uh, at, a, at a point it is very, very harmful. And I know there's people who argue it and say, no, it really helps. People come to the office and they sit here and we talk about their problems and, and they go back into their childhood. Really? And that's helpful? Because it's a lot of reprocessing. Well, it's kind of like warming up the old beans again, and it's very, very mental. There's no compassion in it. It's emotional and mental, but there's no true compassion. Compassionate psychology would be going to visit yourself when you're eight years old from the I am that you are right now. You go back to visit your eight-year-old self. You don't have to say any words to that eight-year-old. You're just there. You don't have to try to repair anything. You don't have to give false hope and promises. Nothing. Just being present. 
just being there. Imagine, well, hell. Let's just do it. Good. Let's take a deep breath. Take a good deep breath. And no music on this one, John. Just take a good deep breath. Here you are, present, coming into your crystalline being, present here at this shout, whether you're here in Coal Creek Canyon or listening now or even later. You're in your body. You're sensing, feeling things. It's amazing, actually, how much distraction I have to do, a lot of yammering up here, just so you can allow yourself. Here you are as a conscious, aware being. You suddenly allow yourself to expand. Expanding meaning we're not going out of the body. This is not astral projection. No more going out of the body. Everything comes in and through the body now. But we expand. The body can expand. It's just energy driven by consciousness. So the body, the being, the I am expand back to when you were about eight years old. You're there with yourself, the eight-year-old, not doing a thing other than observing and being aware. You may be aware of an incident. You may be aware of your eight-year-old's emotion or trauma. That's all right. Oh, you're going to feel it, absolutely, and that's all right to feel it. But you're not there to interfere or counsel or do therapy or Reiki or crystal tuning, anything. You're just there. You are there as a radiant being with yourself. You can observe and feel what's going on, but not trying to change a thing. This, my friends, is compassion. Compassion that you would be there for yourself. Compassion that you would allow whatever is going on to going on to go on. Compassion that you don't have judgments about anything being right or wrong. You're just there. Compassion, just accepting yourself. Now some funny things happen right now. I was an eight-year-old, your eight-year-old, who's going through something in your life at eight years old, suddenly feels a presence, suddenly feels something called love or compassion, suddenly has hope, doesn't feel so alone or lost. An eight-year-old doesn't know how to define it necessarily. Might call it an angel or a saint or one of its spirit friends that it used to have when it was two years old. But it just feels something. And in feeling something, at that point of trauma, it allows whatever stuck energies were there to be free. Whatever perception that eight-year-old continued to have of that event, continued to have when the eight-year-old became twenty and thirty and forty, that eight-year-old held on to the perception of that event until now. 
your compassion, the compassion to go back without judgment, touched this eight-year-old. It did not necessarily change the linear outcome of events, but it changed the perception, the love, the compassion, and the lesson. That, my friends, is compassionate psychology. Next step. Here you are, as a human, sitting in these chairs here in Coal Creek or watching. Here you are, whatever age you're at. You take a deep breath with clarity and simplicity. You allow yourself to feel. There's something here. It's not me. It's not them or they. It's you. And the compassionate soul. Some would say that it comes from the future. It doesn't really matter. But it's here without judgment. It's here reminding itself, you, that it's not alone. It's here with a big smile saying, isn't it amazing? It all worked out. Even in spite of you, it all worked out. In spite of the doubt, the limits, the fears. Now your human mind says, yeah, but where are you coming from? How far in the future? That compassionate soul says, Does it really matter? I'm here. I am that I am. What's it going to take? What's it going to take for freedom? Clarity and compassion. Freedom isn't anything you can fight your way into or out of. Freedom isn't anything that you earn from your good deeds. It's nothing you think your way into. The more thinking, the less freedom. Freedom is the compassion. It's, it's you going back and visiting yourself when you were eight. It's your soul visiting you right now. It's all the same. It's all the same. Let's take a deep breath with that. <laughs> Keep the lights down, please. We'll just move right into the next portion. I'd like to do a mirab, as long as the energy is so beautiful right now. A mirab. Mirab is a shift of consciousness. We just sit back and let it happen. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to struggle with it. Just allow it. Let's take a deep breath and, John, a little music for the background. A mirab is when you pretend you're listening to the music and to me. What you're really doing is just stopping all the commotion when you're in a place of compassion. Compassion is allowing. Compassion is having that attitude that puts a big smile on your face. Big, stupid smile. That's compassion. So I don't know why I'm smiling. Do I have to have a reason? That's, that's the attitude. You know, the human, the body has gotten pretty tired. Whew tired. So what do you do? Body's tired, so you go work out. Go figure. <laughs> Still trying to understand that one. <laughs> Your body is tired. It's getting old. It's not me saying it. It's you saying it. I'm just repeating your words. Your body gets so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. 
especially those who have a lot of what you call uh, sensitivity, but usually imbalanced. You're sensing everything, everybody else, other than yourself. The body picks up on everybody's junk. Sometimes you actually want it to. You take on everybody else's stuff right into your body, smacko. Body oh, forgets how to sleep. Body hurts at times. I look at the energy in your body. It's so locked up. Fear. Fear of itself. Kind of interesting. The body is getting really tired. Run down. Kind of an interesting dynamic is that you're so damn strong willed that it kind of had to come to this, just getting run down before you'd stop and listen. So tough that the body had to start getting so tired. Before you'd let that dream of the soul come in, even though the human physical body is tired, your crystalline I am body, your soul body, is not. Your soul body is not tired. It comes to you, filled with energy, unlimited energy. The human might be tired, and the body wearing out, but the soul is not, and is ageless. Its reservoir is unending. This body, the crystalline body, comes into your physical body. Let go of the tiredness, the illness, the aches and pains. As you invite the crystalline body, the crystalline body will never get tired like the human body. Why? Because it doesn't have a mind attached to it. Crystalline body truly never ages. The crystalline body gently, gently, with the compassion of a master dreamwalker, comes to you right now. Human mind,、oh, so confused, so wrapped up in itself, just trying to get through the day, trying to figure it out. It's gotten so filled with stories, and actually, just what I consider to be very limited perceptions. Its experiences, in other words, not the truth. So filled with its fears, that poor mind, like a little scared bunny, trying to act tough. The mind winding and winding and winding on itself. Really wanting to unwind, but not knowing how, so it continues winding and winding, tighter and tighter. The divine intelligence does not wind at all. The divine intelligence is clarity, simplicity, and ease. 
the divine intelligence doesn't have a need to know everything because within the I am it realizes it knows everything that it needs. While the human mind is confused, racing around, desperately seeking answers, the divine mind comes in. The divine mind comes into this reality easing the human mind of the tensions, of the grayness, of the confusion. And it does so with such joy. It does so with such amazing compassion. I just needed you to be silent for a moment. The divine intelligence is crystalline clear as its structures but the structures are constantly free fluid it allows for is its experiences but never gets caught in them the divine mind comes to you in this dream walk mirab and it wonders wonders when the human mind was going to get so tired it just allows when the human mind stops winding itself in circles and just allows it's present it's not off somewhere else it's not the distant dream it's here What is it going to take? Compassion, a deep breath and compassion and clarity. The human heart, perhaps you would call it your feelings, the heart feels betrayed in many ways, walked on, hopes often stamped out or robbed by others. Human heart feels violated by others and oftentimes by itself. Oh, it wants so much. It wants so much to let you and everyone else know of its tenderness, of its love, of its desire for life. But it feels that every time it's opened up, it's been attacked. So the human heart has closed down, gone quiet, gotten sad. The divine heart, the I am, is clear, is fresh. It does not know betrayal and it never will. It does not know being robbed or violated and it never ever will. This human heart so much wants to feel love in true openness with the divine heart it can once again the I am with its divine heart with its divine intelligence its crystalline body is clear energized, untainted, and will always remain clear, energized, 
and pure comes to you in this dream walk. Doesn't matter if it's coming from the beginning of all time. It doesn't matter if it's coming from some point in the future. It doesn't matter how it got here, but it's here. It doesn't matter if you think you're worthy, if you think you're ready. It knows. You know you are. Take a deep breath and with this beautiful reconnection with who you really are. What does it take? Does it take more suffering? More failures, more tiredness, sleepless nights, bad experiences. It shouldn't. We're in a new era now. We're in a new attitude now. It shouldn't. There should be no more struggling or suffering. When we gather each month, it should just be talking about how much you allowed, not what difficulties you went through. Deep breath. You've come to visit yourself from the past, the present, the future, and the now. Crystal and self has come to embody. With you, come into this tired body and the confused mind and the broken heart. Come back to the I am. What does it take? Just this simplicity. That's it. That's it. Take a deep breath together. Gently, gently, allowing you to come home. Not thinking our way through it. Not just dreaming about it anymore. Not holding all of this off somewhere else. We have a lot of work to do, fun to do. Let's keep this clarity and the compassion going forward. Sometimes when we gather like this, I can be a little direct, provocative, and extremely charming. When we gather like this, oh, I like to. I like to call Macchio Macchio, but you've asked for it. Tired of、uh, tired of just one more spiritual step. So let's not take steps anymore. Let's take a deep breath and bring the lights back up. But let's just stay very gentle. I'm going to tell、uh, one little bit of news, and we'll do some breathing as we. Come out of this session. Take a good deep breath. By the way, this、um, this amazing compassion of your soul, the soul coming to visit you from past, present, future, and the now, is very real. Very real. Don't think about it though, because you're going to do that. You're going to go home later and say, "Now I'm going to try to do that again." It's just allowing. Just allowing. It's not. A set of steps. So, as we talk about dreams, we can cut the fluffy music now. <laughs> as we talk about dreams, I, I want to bring up one thing. 
And there are many, many levels of dreams. Here I'm talking about the dream of freedom, the dream of the I Am embodied with its crystalline being and its biological being, embodied with its divine intelligence and the mind, all embodied together. I'm talking about the dream of your freedom, your freedom. Interesting. Earth is very, very interesting right now. We've been talking about freedom for a couple of years. This question is still out. Are humans really ready for freedom? Or do they just want a little better, just barely enough? <laughs> a little bit more of just barely enough. It's a good question, and you see, it, you see the conflict breaking out all over the world, I mean, everywhere. Uh, from Egypt to, to this United States, South America, everywhere. Really the, the, what the dynamic that's taking place in this world right now is about freedom. That's religious freedom, uh, sexual freedom, freedom of the heart and the soul, freedom to be a woman or a man, freedom to be I am. If you want to say what's the problem with the world or what's the challenge, what do we look at from our perspective? Earth is going through its freedom thing. And there are the group of humans uh, who have royal court once a month, a group of humans who says, yes, that is my choice for freedom. But then they start encountering the challenges along the way, uh, the, the barriers along the way, but there is this burning passion for freedom. So, one more point. Ah, yes, I've kept it short today. One more point. Um, there is something called, you call it, the Saint Germain World Trust. Saint Germain World Trust. A lot of stories going on about it, and it has a degree of truth. It's actually the literal name is not the Saint Germain World Trust. Wouldn't that be nice? But no, some people call it that. Would you believe some people actually like to use my good name? <laughs> it was true to a degree because I was part of a group who started a, well, how would you call it, an abundance bank. The real name is the Illuminated Free World Bank. What does that mean? What means a long time ago, you and me and a bunch of others, we took Literal crystals, valuable jewels, diamonds and rubies and sapphires and emeralds and beautiful jewels. We said we are going to literally put these into the earth, into ca very well protected caverns, caves. We're going to put these into the earth because they have, uh, because they're really nice looking, because they hold a lot of energetic attributes. And at the time, with this uh, stash, or several, many stashes, of very valuable crystal jewels. Some of them actually not even from this planet. Uh, they're from other places in creation that are simply amazing. We stored these in certain pockets or caves around the world and said at the right time we will also use these as the grounding mechanism to bring in multidimensional divine energies. And when that happens, there will be a grand abundance, unlimited abundance of energy for those who are ready, willing and able to handle it. For those who have integrated their own crystalline I Am, or at least started the process of bringing it into the body. It's not designed for those who just want to be grander, richer humans. It will not – I have to repeat very firmly – it will not work for somebody who just wants to have more human wealth. But for somebody who is bringing in their own crystalline consciousness, it is and will be available. You could call it nearly an unlimited supply. It's Amazing, the amount of energy tied up with this. This is available to those who feel they are ready to handle it, who have a project. Now, the project is not necessarily just paying your unpaid bills. Uh, the project is saying, 
that you want to create something. You want to start bringing your dreams to reality and you're going to bring in the abundance for it. It will be available. You don't have to go through a committee. There are no bankers. The nice thing about this illuminated fund is that it is you that goes in and takes as much as you want. Isn't that amazing? No credit checks. No. None at all. No. No committee that's going to turn you down. You go in and withdraw as much as you want. And the nice thing is you never have to repay it. Now, sounds nice. The internet's already flashing with all this. Oh, the emails are going out. But for those who aren't ready to integrate their dreams, to bring in the I am, it's not going to work. First of all, they'll never find the place. Secondly, even if they did, the energies that are associated with this, you could say, are going to bring out their weaknesses rather than their strengths. It's going to uh, literally work against them. Now, we'll talk more about this in our next session, because I told Caldra we'd end early today. Get as close to five o'clock as I can. It is available to you. Now, I can already hear 9,000 questions. Is it going to come to me in cash or a check? <laughs> will be written on the illuminated free World Bank checking account. Who should you email? Who should you email? <laughs> yes, Linda. Uh, <laughs> let me let me point out a couple things. We'll continue the discussion next month. This will get the listenership up. A couple of things. You go and withdraw as much as you want. There's no obligation debt. There's no interest. You don't pay it back. But you have to put it to use. You have to do something with it. You have to do something to manifest your dreams, not somebody else's. Not to save the world. won't work for that. It is for you. It is a gift for you and you alone. And there's plenty for everyone. But it's not to be used to shape others. Remember, from here on, compassionate psychology. That also applies to people in your life, having a little compassion for them. The energies associated with this are backed by the archangels. Archangels have taken kind of temporary residence right now on the New Earth. 144,000 of them have all convened at the same time. Why? First time this has happened since the very creation of the Order of the Ark. Why are they all there? What are they doing? They understand right now the balance between new earth and old, and again we'll get into that in our next session. What is happening, the dynamics. They are helping to build the bridge. They, they are an arc. They are a, a, a bridgeway between the two. They are helping to support and keep a balance for your withdrawals. They're there as the team that's helping to keep the energies balanced and moving for you and for your projects. The, actually, this Order of the Ark, which is com comprised of all of the archangels, is actually, uh, how would you say, uh, almost recreating itself, mimicking itself. What's the Order of the New Earth? Not the New World Order, but the Order of <laughs> the New Earth. It's not a conspiracy. It is a support mechanism. Now, some of you, in the meantime, might be getting emails or information something uh, about something called the uh, Saint Germain World Trust. It's partly true. There is this uh, investment that's been growing for a long time, but it's not gold in a bank. It is literally crystals, valuable gemstones that are in the earth. In the earth, not, not necessarily to, to keep people from stealing it, because it really wouldn't go well if they did, but there to radiate, there to also attract interdimensional energies. 
there are a lot of emails going around right now that the St. Germain World Trust is going to be there to help you pay off your bills and your debts. Does that sound like St. Germain? No. 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 We're not just going to give you – yes, I'm keeping it short today. Uh, we're not just giving you – doling out money, because first of all, we know each other. Well, I know you. If suddenly you got a large amount of money to pay off your debt, what would you do? You go right back into debt. <laughs> Buy everything in sight. Buy everything in sight, yes. And go back into debt. Uh, you hear the old, uh, the old story about if uh, all the money was taken from the rich people and given to the poor people, within two years the rich people would have it back. It's an attitude. It's an attitude whether being poor or being rich. So this fund, uh, the Illuminated Fund, and not Illuminati, and I don't want to hear any of your damn conspiracy stories about that. It is illuminated, radiant. It is available. So between now and our next gathering, what are your dreams? What are you going to be bold enough to bring in here? Because there is energetic support for it. It's a little scary. It's easier to keep the dreams out here, out somewhere else. But, my friends, let's take a deep breath, because now is the time. And when you're thinking about your dreams and the illuminated free world bank, the energy that's going to support your dreams, and you get a little scared and you start thinking, oh, I'm not sure what to dream and what if I screw it up. Stop for a moment, take a deep breath, and remember, all is well in all of creation. Thank you until our next meeting. Thank you. Thanks.